Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill, and I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high-profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559-255-3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Thursday morning. Hey, the sponsorship today is Charles Chuck McGill, but guess what the program is about? It's about bankruptcy, my friends. Are you on the verge of going bankrupt or thinking about it? Or do you have a friend or a relative that might be in that position? You're welcome to call in at 436-ME-TV, option 11. Yeah, that guy Charles Chuck McGill is our sponsor, but you know what? He's a different kind of attorney. Back in just a moment. All right, my friends, it's Ask an Expert Day. We have an expert in the house talking about bankruptcy, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, a couple of programming notes, and that is that Bradley Hart is going to be here tomorrow. Professor at Fresno State, he'll go over what's been going on, I guess, the last couple of days with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And the barbs uh, continue to fly back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, this is a never-ending process, my friends, until we end it all on November the 8th. That's Election Day. And then we'll know who the next president is. And even then, it may not stop. The barbs may continue. Uh, and did you see that uh, climber climbing Trump Tower yesterday with those giant suction cups? We may even uh, t uh, talk about that, you know, when he was... Uh, uh, when they corralled him and pulled him inside the window yesterday on the 23rd floor, he said he wanted to have a private meeting with Donald Trump. That's, I guess that's one way to get it, right? Uh, Trump's uh, private office, I believe, is on the 56th floor. He only made it the, to the 23rd. So we'll talk about that with Bradley Hart. And then on Monday, you right, might remember on July the 9th, there was a, a big rally at Sean Blackstone. It was Black Lives Matter. And they marched all the way to Clovis and back. It was about an eight-mile trek. The organizer, one of the organizers of that event, uh, is going to be here uh, on Monday to talk about that and how he wants major changes to occur within the Fresno Police Department and how he constantly and consistently and on an ongoing basis goes to the Fresno City Council meetings to address these major issues concerning the police force and their... I guess aggressive tactics, what he would call them. So anyway, that's what's coming up. But for now, we're going to talk about bankruptcy and how it may or may not help you. I want to put the first graphic up, my friends, and bankruptcy may help you. Not sure. Here are a couple of things that, uh, or more than a couple, that you can look at and kind of dissect. We'll go over these with our expert today, but you can erase the credit card bills, erase medical bills, stop garnishment, uh, you can stop a foreclosure in a home, stop creditor harassment. In other words, you won't get those uh, phone calls at 2 o'clock in the morning any longer. All right, let's change it. You can keep your car, I'm assuming. You might be able to keep your home, as we just talked about. You can keep your furniture because you don't want to sit on the floor and watch television, or maybe uh, I would just assume you wouldn't want to sit on the floor and eat dinner either. And the biggest thing of all is maybe you'll get just a small peace of mind, and that goes a long way to take your blood pressure down, uh, you know, and also um, probably keep a little bit of peace in the family. If you have a family and you are having such financial difficulties, live in our studio right now to talk about all this is Rosalina Nunes. She's been a longtime attorney. She deals with bankruptcy issues every day. And she also deals with Social Security disability, but she is here to talk about bankruptcy and how it may help you. You know, just that word, bankruptcy, it just rings in my head and it doesn't sound good. It's like, oh my God, you're filing for bankruptcy. That's a negative thing. Or is it? In your case or others, it may be a positive thing because you could wipe the slate clean 
and move your life forward financially and start all over again, but how long does it take? It depends on how far debt you are in and how below or underwater that you are right now. 436 Me TV Option 11. If you're underwater, call in. We'll take your call anyway, even if it's hard to hear. Anyway, Charles Chuck McGill is our sponsor today. Back with our expert in just a moment. Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill, and I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high-profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559-255-3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. Unscramble. Sing, honey, sing. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> ah. Call them classics, call them the best. Call them favorites, be a guest. Ah. Every day there's more to come. Watch and see, there's only one. Me. Me TV. Try me. 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 That's memorable, that's me. That's me. <laughs> me, 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 you gotta see. That's memorable, that's me. Me, 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 me TV. Back here on the program with our show today, and it's called Bankruptcy, my friends. We have an expert in the house. Rosalina Nunez is here once again. How are you? Very well. Thank you for having me back. Hey, no problem. No problem. So let me tell you something. Um, I have this friend up in Sacramento who um, uh, was thinking about filing for bankruptcy, um, lot, you know, in debt by a, by a lot. Uh, may or may not be going through divorce. Um, so, so, and, and also this person watches my show, can't watch it live on Comcast, channel 375 or 43.6, <laughs> but watches it online and once it's posted on our, on our YouTube page. Right. So I told this individual that you were going to be on. So ask her about bankruptcy. If you're like 20, 30 grand in debt, you're going through a divorce. What advice can you give this person? Should you file for divorce first or file for bankruptcy first or do, do something, uh, take action that's, that's simultaneous? Okay, so I, I would need a little more information from her. Probably the best thing that she could do is just give me a call. And I know that she's, you said in Sacramento, yeah. um, so it's not really um, convenient for her to drive all the way down here just to consult with me. But she could give me a call um, because divorce and bankruptcy a lot of times go hand in hand um so do you file both at the same time every case is different the situation is different it depends on whether they've got a lot of property they're going to split up or they're fighting over that might get real messy in a bankruptcy um if her ex is fighting her for for that property and you know, she doesn't have attorney fees to pay a family law attorney. She might want to do the bankruptcy before the divorce because the bankruptcy trustee will actually step in and help her get her equal share of the property. Um, so it well, like credit card bills, if they're both on a credit card and they have this outstanding debt that they can't pay. Uh, that they're going to have to split in half, I'm assuming, right? They might be ordered by family law court to split that in half. Um, and There's if, no kids involved, so. If that happens, um, you know, she could afterwards file the bankruptcy and discharge her half that she's liable for. Um, but even if um, she were to receive a family law court order that says she has to pay all of that credit card debt, she could still discharge it in a bankruptcy. So... Um, filing for divorce first or bankruptcy first is kind of a catch-22 or is it uh, case by case? It's case by case and it, it's really going to depend more on the property that they have if they're splitting that up. There's only, there's only I, I believe there's only one house involved. Yeah, so it's going to depend on who's keeping it, who's going to keep that mortgage. Um, all of that comes into play. So it is a case by case. I, I couldn't. Can you file for bankruptcy if you own a house? Absolutely. You um, can? Several homeowners. And you many, can keep your house. Many homeowners file for bankruptcy. Um, you know, they've got their house, they're making the payments, they're uh, on time, they're current huh. on those payments, but they've got a ton of other credit card debt or medical bills. Um, and a lot of times, 
were able to protect the house, exempt it in the bankruptcy, and they're able to keep the house. In most cases or some cases, or the I majority would, of cases? I would or? say most cases. Really? Most of my cases, um, there, there's, because home values have been down for quite some time, um, home equity hasn't really been an issue. When it is, that's something yeah. that we need to discuss before you take make that decision to file for See, bankruptcy. See, obviously, if you have outstanding credit card debt like that, you're spending money like a drunken sailor. Let's <laughs> let's face it. I mean, this person knows that they're they're spending money left and right. I mean, how else do you? Look, you don't get in a hole by twenty or thirty grand by not spending money. It's well, kind of black and white. You know what I mean? You know, I don't have, I don't completely agree with that because really? credit card debt isn't a true number in my opinion someone comes to me and they say i've had this credit card for 10 years and i owe yeah. them twenty thousand dollars on this credit card that's a lot um, of money if you've had a card for 10 years you've been paying it for 10 years because otherwise the creditor will shut it down they'll they'll cut that credit a long time ago so you're so, saying it's not an indicator that this person is spending money uh, you know, like uh, like it's going out of style. No, because the credit card company is designed to make money for the credit card company for the for the bank. So you're so saying the interest rates is the are, are interest what? rate, late fees, um, annual percentage fees, just all of these fees that are attached. Those those aren't numbers that really reflect what this person has spent or what they've used on that credit card because if they've racked it up to twenty thousand dollars or or more it's because they've had the card for a very long time and they've also paid on it for years and years and they've probably paid and they can't catch up is what they can't saying. catch up and they've probably paid what they've borrowed hmm. three or four times over hmm interesting and so I, I, you know, I don't understand. So you, you go into bankruptcy court, and is, is there a judge involved? Uh, there is a judge that gets assigned to the case, but I would say 95% of a, a simple Chapter 7 case, the uh, client never even sees a judge. There is a, a meet, meeting of creditors that we go to, um, but it's just a trustee that's assigned to the case. And this person mm. um, is usually an attorney or a CPA that's yeah. been assigned by the court that reviews all of your paperwork before you even go to court. So they know that you have a house. They know that you might have a couple of cars. They know you've got a bank account we, because we've listed all of these things. We've disclosed to the court that I have these assets, but they're, they're not really worth much. What if you have money in the bank? Can they take that? It depends on your case. It's a case by case deal. So if you've got home equity that you need to protect, it's going to be difficult to protect the home equity and the money in the bank. Um, but were they going to leave you penniless in the bank? Well, most people that are filing. Well, if you have ten grand in the bank, they're going to take the whole ten. They're not going to leave not you. A, they're not going to leave you a few crumbs. Not necessarily. Um, there. Leave, leave me a crumb or two. No, no, no. There are times <laughs> where you can protect money in your Hang bank on, account. Caller. You can, you and can. along with the house. Along with the house, along wow. with the house. But I mean, if you, I mean, within reason. I mean, you can't have a house plus have a million dollars cash in the bank and then say, then oh, you I'm are not bank bankrupt. No, then you are not bankrupt no, if you no, have a million no, dollars no, in your you bank account. No, they throw your case out, don't <laughs> exactly. they? Exactly. All right, caller, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, hi, uh, Rosalinda. Uh, I have a Walmart card, and what's going on is that. I purchased on a Black Friday a $200 screen TV, and I also purchased a vacuum cleaner, a battery, and a few miscellaneous stuff. Mm -hmm. And my bill, I'm paying $100 a month, and it keeps going up, 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 and it's up to $3,000, and that's all I purchased. So I'm in a bind, I'm in a fixed income, okay? Another situation, I went and bought a phone at a jewelry store. The phone, they told me it was an H2O, AT&T. They financed it to the bank without me signing anything. They just checked my credit. The phone does not charge. It just says no slim card when they put a slim card. He didn't give me the receipt. He didn't give me the right box. Now I'm stuck with that bill. And as I went back to step one Walmart, I called them, I froze my account, they stopped my interest. I'm gonna take four years to pay them for something that I never purchased. And uh, one from jewelry store, he, he wow. just doesn't wanna give me the receipt nor the box. Huh. All right, so this so is a, 
crazy. That sounds Th like a crazy story. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Um, yeah. You know, this is one really great example of, um, you know, just what credit card companies think of the consumer. I have a lot of clients that come in and they feel so terribly guilty that they're, they've had this card, it's saved them from a bind here and there over the years. And then now here they are in my office about to file bankruptcy on these cards. And they feel so terrible. They, they just feel like they failed somehow and they feel so embarrassed uh, with the credit card companies. But I tell them, you've not actually borrowed this amount that they're charging you. This is a lot of interest. This is our inflated numbers. Uh, this is how they make their money. Um, and you've paid and paid, just like this caller. She's paid and paid. She's on a fixed income. She's paying $100 a month. $100 a month for someone on a fixed income is a lot of money. Um, and yeah. this is a perfect situation where you've got to come to terms that this is about my survival. This is about paying my bills. I've got to pay rent. I've got to buy food. I've got to pay for PG&E. Do I really need to pay this Walmart card or do I really need to start thinking about filing for bankruptcy? So hmm, that's a tough decision. That caller still there? Really? Any other questions? Uh, yes. Also, I wanted to comment that I'm single and disabled and I have an outstanding credit. Well, Walmart already ruined my credit, even though I never failed them a month to pay the payment because of my credit and borrowing money to meet ends meet. And it, that's going to ruin my credit for the rest of my life because I stopped it, I froze it, and the interest. And how long does that affect in my record? You know, yeah, that's the other question. It, the record, it stays on there for a long time. It does stay on there. When you've got negative reporting um, in your situation with the Walmart card because it got closed like that mm. um, without you paying it off first, it is going to be a negative um, reporting on your credit report. Um, you know, and it'll probably report for the next seven years um, as, as you closing it without paying it like that. Yeah, if... if, if um do you, let me ask you, caller, uh, are you seeking uh, the help of an attorney? Uh, is that what you'd like to have? Because Rosalina would be available if you'd like to call her. Uh, is, that, is that what you're looking for? Yes, but I don't have no money to pay an attorney or anything. I'm single and disabled. Yes, right. I, I understand that. What what can you do to, to you help know, this young um, lady? I, I feel sorry for if, her. If the only debt is the Walmart card, and it's, um, you said, I think, for $3,000, honestly, in that situation, I wouldn't even recommend that she file for bankruptcy. Okay. It, it's just not really, in my opinion, enough to, you know, even yeah. worth filing for bankruptcy. If there's other debt, if there's medical bills, other credit cards, um, then it's worthwhile, and I do have a payment plan, So it's, and I do understand that people are on a budget, people are in a bind, that's why they're there to see me, right. to file for bankruptcy, so I understand that. And I take each case, um, you know, I, I treat everybody, depending on their situation, how you come to me, that's how I'm going to treat you. So if you need a payment plan, if you need extra help, you know, we can talk about that. Um, I also help people negotiate debt, so settlement. Um, when someone comes to me like this on a fixed income and their only debt is $3,000, but it's really hurting her, she's got to do something about it, then, um, you know, there is there is always something that can be done. Yeah. Okay, and, thanks, caller. And, and I really appreciate it. About, that, about the uh, telephone that I was telling you, can I take them to small claims court for not giving me the receipt and... The right box? Well, um, you should give me a call because I, I don't think that I know all of the facts um, to be able to advise you uh, on the air like this. Um, but give your phone number. You my would. telephone number is 559-221-2677. 221-2677. Go ahead and give and me a call. Ned. I have a witness that was with me when they didn't want to give me my receipt and then he didn't want to give me the right box and he told me you're on your own. Here's the thing, caller, we're, we're kind of short on time now. So do you have a pen to write her phone number down? Because I don't think we're going to solve this on the air. So your number again is... 221-2677. Uh... Got that? Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. We're going to be back with more of our show, 436 Me TV Option 11, talking about bankruptcy. If you're in trouble, call in, get some advice. We may not be able to solve the case here, but you might be able to go in and talk to Rosalina in person. Anyway, uh, today's program sponsored by Charles Chuck McGill. You know, this guy's been practicing a long time, my friends. Too long. I think it's time to retire, Chuck, don't you? Back in just a moment. <laughs> when you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the KitchenAid appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Save big with KitchenAid. Right now, get up to a $1,000 prepaid MasterCard when you purchase select KitchenAid appliances. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. It's no wonder why the City of Fresno and so many Valley businesses choose McHenry Protective and Investigative Services. With over 50 years of experience in public safety and security, McHenry's team of experts will safeguard you, your commercial property, and your next big event. Professional service, marked patrol vehicles, 24-hour dispatch, and friendly, observant, and responsive armed and unarmed guards are just a few of the reasons you should contact McHenry at 559-478-7747 or visit them online at McHenryProtection.com. 436, Me TV Option 11. Uh, we're back here on the program talking about bankruptcy. And um, we have a caller, another caller, waiting to talk to you, Rosalina. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Uh, Rosalina, I'd like to bring up a subject and see if this is still true today. There was a time when if you were able to negotiate down debt with the debtor, that IRS would consider that uh, income and you'd have to pay taxes on that difference. Would you discuss that, please, if that's still uh, occurring, and whether it's better to make a negotiation and pay down your debt or to file bankruptcy? Could you please do that? I'm going to hang up now. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. That is a really great question. Um, mm -hmm. That is still true. So um, the tax code... Um, which the IRS is bound by, does state that if you um, settle down debt like that and um, you're forgiven for X amount of dollars... Owed to the IRS. Then... Right? No, no, no. So if you've got a credit card, let's say you've got a credit card with Capital oh, I thought you were Capital talking about One. the IRS or the government. I'm going to get to that. So, oh, okay. So you've got a credit card, for example, with uh, Capital One, okay? Mm -hmm. And you owe them $10,000... Mm -hmm. um, you come into a little bit of money, you negotiate with them, you settle it for 5000 mm -hmm. At the end of the year, or at the beginning of the new year, Capital One um, has a right to send you a 1099 form, which um, says that they forgave $5,000 debt. And that b equals income. That is the definition of income in the tax code. So You're kidding me. No. So uh, you will have to pay taxes on that $5,000 that, that, that you, you settled. Saved? That you saved. Yes. Um, and so... Wow. And so what's the percentage on that? Well, it it depends on what tax bracket you're in. So, um, so at every again, yeah. I, I hate to say this because I sound like such a lawyer, but every case is different. Um, you know, every case is different. Depends on what tax bracket you're in. It depends. Um, you know, all of that comes into play. So you have to really decide whether settling debt is a good idea or not. As now, opposed to going bankrupt. As opposed to going bankrupt, because the tax code says that one of the exceptions to huh. that rule is if you file for bankruptcy wow. then you don't have to file or pay taxes on that forgiven debt so macy's let's say i have a macy's card and uh i owe five grand and macy's says ah, i don't worry about it you, you pay us two grand and we'll, we'll forget the whole thing i have to pay a tax on that remaining three grand that i saved very likely, very likely. And, and if um, I don't, how the IRS will eventually find out. They'll find it. you. They'll they find will you. find you. They, they will, will find you. They will come get you. They will tax you and they'll you find you. You cannot hide, can you? You cannot hide because the the <laughs> credit company for Macy's will issue the 1099. That gets reported to the IRS. They send you a copy and you have to file it with your taxes and you have to report that as income because it's money saved and the tax code says that that equals the definition of income. All right. And um, let me see. Here's an email question. Would your guest negotiate down IRS debt? Is that, do you do that? 
I don't do that uh, directly with the IRS. Um, okay. Person better fitted suited for that would be an actual CPA that that speaks directly to the IRS okay. or a tax attorney. Okay. Um, but taxes, um, a lot of people uh, believe that our taxes are not dischargeable in a bankruptcy and taxes um, can be sometimes discharged in a bankruptcy. All so. right. Uh, in the monologue, I showed some uh, two graphics. I want to put those back up and discuss them. With Bankruptcy may help you. Let's put those first two up again so we can kind of kind of talk about them individually just, just briefly, bri briefly here. Uh, it says erase uh, credit card bills. Um, obviously, you can do that. You agree with that. Yes. Can you erase medical bills? Yes. In fact, medical bills are the number one reason people file for bankruptcy. Damn. And that's okay. been, for many, many years, that's been the yeah. reason, yeah, yeah. number that's, one reason. And it shouldn't be that way. It really shouldn't. People it, get sick, they can't help it. It shouldn't be, um, but... What are you going to do? You all, everyone at some point is going to need medical attention for something. Everybody. And everyone. Unless they just keel over and die on the spot. Right, exactly. But. All right, got a phone call here, but keep that up there. I want to talk about this for a minute. Hang, hang on, caller. I'll get to you in a moment. Okay. They can, they can stop garnishing your wages. Am I, am I right? Yes, bankruptcy, as soon as you file for bankruptcy, right at that second. So before you even go to court, just the moment you file for bankruptcy, you get what's called the automatic stay from the bankruptcy yeah. court and that is protection from all creditors yeah. and all creditors have to stop collecting hmm. they have to stop calling you and they have to stop garnishing yeah i i, I hate to laugh about this but the, the lady pictured there she looks like she just won some money up there at she looks like she won the lottery yeah, yeah like the, like the, like she won. <laughs> well maybe she's happy because she's debt free now. well I mean, now I mean, her money gets to stay in her pocket and she's right. not uh, getting garnished she's not that's having right. she to... can put that cash that she's holding up there she can put that in her her purse exactly and spend it it's on, a good thing <laughs> yeah going out and celebrating with their better half or whatever <laughs> all right you can stop hang on caller you can stop foreclosing Closure of uh, a home. We already talked about that, so that's a yes. Um, you can stop creditors from harassing you. That kind of goes with the garnishment thing. Okay, let's change the next one. I'll get to you in a second, caller. Um, yes, you get to keep your car, right? Yes. Well, in most cases. In most cases. All right. I, in most cases. All right. But if you have a boat, they're probably going to haul that away, right? Not necessarily. I mean, huh. um, not necessarily. Well, I, they're gonna, they're, aren't they going to come to you and say, look, uh, you, you need that car to get to work, but you don't need a boat to get to work. Well, the court isn't <laughs> looking at what you have. They're looking at the value of the things you have, and they allow you X amount of things. Oh. And so as long as the things you have are under that amount, oh. you're going to keep it. Oh, okay. You get to keep your home. Obviously, we talked about that uh, in most cases is keep your furniture i'm assuming that's a good thing you don't have to sit yeah on the you know the trustees don't come look at furniture um yeah. as long as you've got ordinary furniture yeah. just couches a bedroom yeah. set you know kitchen appliances that's yeah. ordinary furniture but if you've got you know some fancy furniture that you inherited antiques, antiques like, something that's uh, of real value then they might start looking at it huh okay and obviously the last one it goes without saying you get a tremendous amount of peace of mind because you can sleep at night, and we all need a good night's That's sleep. That's probably the the most valuable thing is is peace yeah. of mind. All right, um, caller, you've been so patient. I appreciate it. What's your question hey, today? Hey, hey, John, you got it. Is her name Rosanna? Is Rosa, it? Am I Rosalina. Correct? Rosalina. Oh, Rosalina. I stand corrected. Thank you, John. Rosalina. I got just a couple of questions. It may go to three, but. When you know a bankruptcy, does that come with recession? Be, having or um, having bankruptcy, bankruptcy, is that coming um, because of recession? Re recession. That's the first question. And when and can you when you took classes, did they tell you when re um, bankruptcy started? The year that actually took place for attorneys. That that's the second question. And the third one, if you could answer it, is there more bankruptcy with divorces than not? As they, they go together, or um, that's good. They don't. Yeah, Maybe you know, is it fifty-fifty on that you. one? So those are my well, you could say three questions. All right, if that's you can. great. Okay, thank, right, thank you. Thank you for the call oh, very ahead. much.
Okay. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you very much. Three outstanding. I want to start with number three for, first. Uh, do more bankruptcies occur that go hand in hand with divorces? That's a very good question. Yeah, you know, and I kind of touched on that earlier when you were talking about your friend in Sacramento um, that she's going yeah. through a divorce. Um, Actually, it's a the, he, but that's okay. A he, I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, I believe that um, a lot of times a bankruptcy goes hand in hand with, the, um, with a divorce, and that's because you've you know, it's kind of obvious you've got two people who are probably working. So you've got two incomes in a home. Um, you've got two or three cars. You might have a boat. You might have a house and um, a couple of kids. And then all of a sudden you break up that team and each person goes from being accustomed to spending and living with two incomes to just one income and one of you's maybe paying child support and one of you's also paying alimony yeah. um and so now you've got less income um and more bills and yeah. so now what's going to go out the window probably the credit card bills um maybe stop making payments on the motorcycle and on the boat maybe mm -hmm. you don't need a luxury car anymore maybe you got a downgrade so all of that comes into play when you when you're going through a divorce so so in his case it just just a little brief history here because i'm not giving any names but um good friend of mine i've known him for a long time he's going through a divorce um he stayed in the home she packed up and moved out into an apartment um uh, with her boyfriend mm. Okay, now despite that, uh, they have bills at the house. Are they both responsible for those bills? And if they file for bankruptcy, if he files for bankruptcy, is she not part of that bankruptcy? Because they're both on these statements. All right, so if he were to file bankruptcy right now, um, it would. You know what I'm saying? Right. They've separated. So the the, yeah, the marriage, separated. the marriage. Um, hang on, hang on, caller. They have separated. So she's not responsible for paying his living expenses. Um, there's no court order that says she has to do that. Um, if he wants her, even to, though there's a house payment, she doesn't. She's not. She has every right to walk away from that. She has every right to walk away from the marriage and walk really? away from the property. So she she wouldn't be responsible for the house payment. And but what about credit card bills? So she. If her, they're both if names they're, are. If they're both named on it, she's going to be liable. The credit card company isn't going to say, oh, honey, well, you moved out and you're in an apartment now and we understand you're going through a divorce and so we're, we're not going to bill you anymore. The bill is going to continue coming in both of their names. It'll continue to report to both of their credit reports. If, he, if your friend files for bankruptcy and discharges all of this debt, she is still liable for it. Okay. She's, whether they're married and, or divorced. Hang, hang on, call. And 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 his name is now on the. It's it's his house. Okay. Her name is off the house. It's off the the, the deed. The deed. Oh. However, her name is still on, on the, the loan. loan. Yeah. Is that a big is that a big deal when you file for bankruptcy? Well, um, not really. It's not it's really not. an issue. Not really. No. Oh, okay. Um I mean he'll explain that they were married and um the deed is now only in his name. Um but the loan a trustee isn't really worried about. They're more concerned about who it's deeded to, who owns it. Yeah. And if his name is on the deed and hers is off now, that house is his it's, legally. It's his now. Yeah. It's so his. okay. Well good. I hope he's watching online. Mm -hmm. So some good. So go seek somebody in Sacramento. You know, don't come all the way to Fresno. <laughs> anyway, uh, Carl, you've been patient. Go ahead. You're on the air with Russell. Okay, Ru uh, I am going to ask a question, but I do want to mention one thing on this divorce thing. You you have to really look at those divorce papers and see what they actually say, because if the divorce papers hasn't cleared her off that property and, you know, settle it that it's his, you know, she could still have some obligations. So be careful with that one. The thing I wanted to talk about is maybe um, a change in attitude. You know, when you, um, I have a friend, for instance, that uh, he seems to think that, wow, you know, he has all this available credit. And wow, you know, I, I have all these credit cards. I'm, I, you know, and, uh, he thinks of this as an asset. So when he buys something, instead of paying it off, you know, he just leaves it on there and, oh, I want to do this other thing, I'm going to charge that up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need a little bit of a change of attitude in, as to how we use credit. 
and that little trick that the stores play on you of, oh, hey, you can get an extra $10 off if you will sign up with our store credit card. Well, you know those cards go on your uh, your score, the more you got, and also they know that they give you that $10, you're not going to be paying it off right away, you know, and so they're going to make that much more money off of you because you're going to pay the minimum amount and minimum amount and minimum amount. They give you that $10, they're going to get that back to like, you know, in the snap of a finger, okay? Okay. And um, all right. That's about all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, does she bring up some good points? Yeah, those are really great comments. Um it it is true. Um you know, I'm absolutely not promoting that people go wild on their credit cards and then, you know, come see me and file for bankruptcy. You know, and that's most of my clients um that's not the it's a case self control issue it, you know most of my of clients cases. come in with a very humble attitude it's it's usually a married couple who have been just trying to keep their head above water um pay the house pay their car payments you know take their kids to school get them through um you know all their daily living yeah. and sometimes there's just not enough money sometimes their paycheck just doesn't make it through I, the whole month i i, I got to go to break but just, just give me a quick scenario here um how does this fall along racial lines who's coming in the most to see you people of color uh white people you know uh, what or it's, is it is it just across it's the board, across the board. It, it really is, is it's huh? across that's not an issue at all it's across the board it's it's everybody if you're living in america you know um because there are a lot of all... low-income hispanics that live in this area we all know that so are are a lot of those people coming in or um middle class people or i've middle got class. every kind of person that comes in i've got people who work for the government who are making a ton of money who've got that great file? who've got great benefits who have great what? jobs the more money you make the more you spend so um, those are the kind of people that are coming in to see you huh those are the people that um, are spending and wow. keeping up with the Joneses and spending a lot of money. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it just get it happens to the best of us, and it, it doesn't matter what color your skin is. It, it really doesn't matter. So that's not even an issue. Okay, 436, me TV option 11. We'll get, hey, that caller that called in and had three questions, we still have to get to his other two questions, and I have all these graphics to get to, too. So there's a lot to talk about sure. today. Okay, are you with me here? I'm here. All right, uh, 436, me TV option 11. Charles, Chuck McGill, our sponsor today. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first Pulsator Agitator Washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill, and I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high-profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559-255-3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. We were just talking here with Rosalina. How do you know all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you went to law school. Uh, where was it? San Joaquin? I did attend San Joaquin College of Law here in town. Um, but, yeah. you know, when I was in school, um, there weren't any bankruptcy classes being offered during that time. Um, I just happened to work for a bankruptcy hmm. attorney here in town and he hmm. taught me everything that he knew and I loved he would I was a law student but he would take me to yeah. all the bankruptcy courts that he had all of his appearances with with our clients and I just I loved it he also practiced criminal defense and I was you know a little interested in it but um, bankruptcy yeah. I love dealing with those clients I loved how life-changing this was for them well and, and here's the thing uh, I want to bring up two points here take take that camera right there and so you can see the desk uh, Rosalina comes in here today she has look at the desk 
She has no notes in front of her. She's talking right <laughs> off the top of her head. Doesn't that tell you she knows what she's talking about? Uh, only her glasses are sitting on that desk. <laughs> Plus a cup you can't see there, a coffee cup on the side. So, I mean, you're talking right off the top of your head. That's pretty impressive. You know your stuff inside out. There's no question. But the other thing that I want to stress is, is I bring up the Hispanic issue only because you speak Spanish. So you can help these people who may have a problem with uh, the English language. They haven't mastered it yet, so you can speak to them in their native tongue. And that's, that's important. I want you to stress that because uh, a lot of people go in and see you. Absolutely. Um, you know, and that I have the great fortune of being, um, you know, born and raised into uh, um, two wonderful Mexican parents. Um, right. But you're bilingual, so. Who taught me Spanish. That's my first language. Um, and, you know, I do get a lot of people who come in to see me just based for that reason. Um, sure. They, they don't know how long I've been practicing. They don't know where I went to law school. They know I'm an attorney and that I speak Spanish. Um, but that's and an that's, important factor, communication. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially when someone comes in and says, hey, I want to get rid of all this debt, but I've got a house and it's worth mm -hmm. a little bit of money. I want to protect it. Yeah. Um, I want to keep this car. So th all of those things are important going into a bankruptcy, knowing what you're getting into and making sure that you're communicating properly with your attorney. All right, let's get through some of these graphics here. Uh, I want to put up the one that's called create a line within your budget. And these come with two, there, there are two different screens. There's, there's one right there. Your chapter, we're talking about chapter 13 here in, the, in this one, this particular one. So uh, your chapter 13 will not work if you do not or cannot make your plan payments. Your chapter 13 plan is based on a two-part calculation. Is that true or false? Um, that's absolutely true. If a chapter 13 bankruptcy is a repayment plan, and so um, that's designed for people who've got high income, also have a high debt, and the court says, you know what, you can afford to pay your monthly bills, you can afford to pay yeah. your house and cars, um, and then you've also got a little extra disposable money at the end of the month, we're going to put you in a plan. But what, if about you this, what about this one here? The amount of debt that must be repaid in the plan and your ability to pay those debts, obviously you have less control over the amount of your debt than you do your budget. Right. Uh, how um, does that play a role? Keep that up there just for a minute, minute there, that graphic, and, and talk about that second part to that, to that question. Okay, so um, you do have um, less control over your debt, especially if it's credit card debt, because that's yeah. continuously growing with interest. Um, so that's going to continue growing. Um, your budget is your budget. I mean, you only earn a certain amount unless you go out and get a second job yeah. or you rent a room to somebody in your house um, it's really hard to change your budget um, so like the lady that called earlier and said you know we've got to change the attitude we can't just spend 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 I want this I want that you know we can't do that obviously um, but you know I don't think that that's the attitude that my clients come in with um, oh. I really believe that people are just yeah. really just trying to live and get by Okay, I want to put up the next graphic, and this one comes with four different screens. How your budget plays a role in your household. How your budget plays a role. We'll put the first one up and keep that one up there just for a moment until we get through it here. Chapter 13, your ability to pay based upon your uh, disposable income. Disposable income is what you must pay into your Chapter 13 plan each month. Is that true? All right, so this is uh, perfect. This really describes what a Chapter 13 is. We take into account what your monthly household expenses are. If there's any money left over, if you've got, you know, two, three hundred dollars or more left over at the end of the month, we're going to put you in a Chapter 13, 13 plan because the court is going it's to find... It's a payment plan, right? It's a payment plan and the court is going to find that, hey, you can get rid of a lot of your debt, but you're going to pay some of it back in the next three to five years. And that's a Chapter 13 plan. But I have to say that most people qualify for a Chapter 7, and in a Chapter 7, most of the time you're able to get rid of 100% of your debt and you don't have to pay it back. So Chapter 7 may be better than Chapter 13. In my you. opinion, it is by far better than Chapter, chapter 13. Seven. Okay, but we're going to continue along this line. Put up the second one, how your budget plays a role. 
some of your expenses might be uh, discretionary, such as cable TV, putting together your budget. You can uh, cut discretionary expenses if you need to increase uh, disposable income. So if you cut your cable TV, you can still watch this program because you can come in and buy an antenna <laughs> for a very cheap price and watch us on 43.6. So th this is true also. You can cut that discretionary spending. Am I right? You can. Um, the bankruptcy court actually doesn't um, expect you to cut your cable TV. Um, they, oh. they allow you an entertainment expense, oh. nothing extraordinary, something reasonable, um, but they do allow you certain expenses for, okay. you know, your laundry, for traveling, for, That's good. you know, transportation and for okay. entertainment. Yeah, within reason. Okay, within put up the, reason. Yeah. yeah, put up the next one, the third one that goes along with this. Creating a budget and analyzing your plan payments also serves as an important reality check. That's what we all need, a reality check for you. If your budget cannot uh, realistically support the debts that you must uh, repay in a Chapter 13 plan, then it's time to consider other options. Right. Absolutely. Um, so who knows what those are? But. This is a reality check, and a lot of clients that come in once we start doing that income and expense sheet, and we're looking at all the income that comes in, and then we really look look at what their expenses are, and we we we're not just guessing; we're looking at accurate, numbers. actual numbers. What you're spending on PG and E, all yeah. that stuff. It is a reality check. Okay, and the last one that goes along with this one is if your budget can't support the uh, uh, payment plan uh, or plan payments, then you uh, now know what to expect going into Chapter 13 and can uh, plan accordingly. You can stay committed to the budget for the next uh, three to five years, or maybe even longer, huh? No, it's it's limited oh, it's to, five, to, years. Oh, it's limited five, to so five, five years. Limited to five years. Five years and mm -hmm. out. Oh, wow, okay. Well, we got to take a break. We'll take a break and come back and do some more graphics. And, uh, the, you know, these graphics really help people understand the issue a little bit better. So Chapter 7, as Rosie said, may, in fact, m might be better for your situation. You just have to go in and talk to her. 436, MeTV, Option 11. Every case is different. Charles Chuck McGill, an attorney of a different kind, is our sponsor today. Back in a moment. A top secret location. It's the spies who love me, bringing together MeTV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're daring. That's right. Free. Now what are we going to do? The best we can. Suave. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. MeTV Fresno. Channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill, and I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high-profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559-255-3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. Okay, we'll get through as many of these graphics as we possibly can. See, I waited a little bit too long, but caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. I wanted to point out something, uh, a couple of things that might help. Um, most people don't know this, but not only can you call into your credit card company and ask for an increase in uh, credit line, but you can also go in there and say, hey, I don't want this large credit line. Would you please cut it down for me? And that will help keep you in a budget because you'll be limited on that line. And the other thing is don't take out a whole bunch of different cards. If you go in the store, they offer you that $10 on that card, don't take it. Okay. Because uh, the more cards you have, yeah. that is you have to divide up your money right. to pay on those cards. All right. If thank you just you. have one, it's easier to pay down thank, one. Thank, thank okay. You. Thank you very much. That's true. It is true. Um, one of the one of the things that happened in 2005 when the bankruptcy code was was turned around um, was they've implemented a requirement to do a credit counseling course, and so now everyone that files for bankruptcy is required to do a course in credit counseling before they file. Wow. So all we go over. So all you're going to have to do that whether you like it or not. So yeah. So it's kind of like going to. Um, uh, if if you're getting a divorce and you're, it's mandatory you go to counseling. 
Right. It's kind of like that. They go through mediation or something mediation like that. Mediation or something like that. So if you're filing, so let me let me stress it. If you're filing for bankruptcy, you're going to have to go to some sort of uh, bankruptcy or financial counseling so you won't get into this uh, pickle again, right? Right. Hang on, caller. Are, are you there? Yeah, but I cannot get you on 43.6. Uh, and also five o'clock and four Oh, okay. Well, the caller was just saying that they can't see us on 43.6. We'll alert our engineer department, engineering department on that. Thank you very much for the call, sir. I appreciate it. I don't know why. I don't know if 13.1 is working. You know, I'm sitting here at the desk. I can't tell if we're on. <laughs> how, how would I know that? We're talking anyway, into the air. <laughs> yeah, but we're on Comcast Channel 375, not on 43.6. I have no idea why. But thank you for alerting us on that. Let's put up the next graphic. Mastering Chapter 13, the paperwork. The paperwork is endless. Oh, I hate this. I hate paperwork, but we all have to do it. No, I'm serious. It's the massive. Ad, it's massive. But that's I why know. you hire an attorney. Because Look at that. 40 pages or more on well, some of this more paperwork? More than that. I mean, more you're looking that? at at least 50 to 60 pages. Oh, my God. And, and, and you have to, see, you have to hire somebody like you to read the fine print because you're going to stay up at night until all hours of the night to read the fine print. We're Are you going not? to get it done, exactly. Okay, yeah. next one on this same one, Master uh, Chapter 13. So you must also uh, gather and organize and maintain your financial records, that goes without saying, and that's where the, the, this class comes in handy, right? The counseling comes in, they help you do this? No, no, no. They um, don't? Well, the credit counseling is going to do kind of an income and expense deal with you. They help They're you going to budget. That. They're yeah, going to budget. budget. Yeah. Um, so they are going to look at what you're spending your money on um, and, and kind of make you look at what your priorities are, what's important, what's necessary, and what's just a want. All right. And if you haven't filed those tax returns there at the bottom, you can see that uh, you darn well better do that at ASAP if you're in that uh, type of situation. Uh, before you file bankruptcy, put up put up the next one along the same line. Once your personal financial documents are in order, be prepared to supply them to your attorney or Chapter 13 trustee at a moment's notice. I mean, you can't look when you need to provide the documents. You just do it. Right? You know, that's the thing is people come in for the consultation. They have no idea what to expect and they have no idea what's expected of them. And so that's why you want to consult with an attorney because you come in, you get all the information you need, and then a good attorney is going to instruct you and give you a specific list of what you're going to have to prepare. And yeah. then once you bring that into the law office, um, then they'll prepare the petition. They're, yeah. You're not. They're not just going to be and, thrown into bankruptcy and not not be yeah, ready. And, and there could be changes to the documents, as you see there at the bottom. You don't. You don't know until they talk to a person like you. So the next one. Let's put the next one up. Uh, when preparing your paperwork, be honest. Oh my God, that's so important. Because if you're not honest, they're going to find out, right? They will they're find out. Find out. You got to be accurate. And you have to be through. Doesn't that go without saying? That goes, it should go without saying, but it does have to be said. Um, you know, and when you lie or you try to deceive or yeah. try to hide something in bankruptcy, that is bankruptcy fraud and it is a oh, federal crime. My God. So, it for is example, a federal crime. You have a vacation home in the Bahamas. Uh, and you don't disclose it? Ooh. That, that could. Don't. Don't you could get, be investigated. Don't even go. There there. are signs in bankruptcy court when you walk in, um, and the trustee um, tells everyone, announces it before they start the hearing. Huh. If you've lied, if you've huh. deceived, if you've hidden something, it could be considered bankruptcy fraud, wow. and it is investigated by the FBI. Wow. So it is, it's serious. Yeah. You've, you've got to be honest. Yeah, unless you want to be sitting next to O.J. Simpson somewhere in <laughs> Florida, uh, don't do that. But, you don't know, do most that. people don't have a house in the Bahamas. Or Charles so. Manson or whoever. Uh, don't, don't, do that. <laughs> no. don't do that. Don't do that. Master Chapter 13, the next one, um, uh, filing out all the uh, bankruptcy papers can be time-consuming frustrating, difficult, and you may have to dig for some of those papers. You may have to dig and dig and dig. Some may be out in the garage, some may be out in the shed, some might be in your bedroom, under the bed. You don't know. Right. Um, now, I've got a system where I can request um, tax transcripts from the, directly from the mm -hmm. IRS, and we get those within a few days. So yeah. sometimes we do get clients who just have not yeah. kept track of these records, and yeah. but we can um, order we can, those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next check. one and the final one for uh, Mastering Chapter 13, better be prepared to respond to any kind of questions. A three, 
341 meeting of credit at, at the 341 meeting of creditors. What is that, by the way? That's the code of the bankruptcy code is section 341. Oh. Um, so that's why it's called the 341 meeting of creditors. But the meeting of creditors is typically the only hearing um, that you're going to in a chapter seven and in a chapter 13 bankruptcy. Um, it's where you um, go before the trustee, swear in, and basically just testify that yeah. everything you put in your paperwork okay. is true and correct. All right. I, you know, I'm not going to sleep tonight until I get through all these graphics. Okay. Let's put up non-dischargeable uh, <laughs> debt. Uh, put up that. There's only two of them. So taxes, student loans, child support, uh, or alimony payments. That's right. And uh, fraudulent debts. Now, one thing on the taxes that's not absolutely true. Um, taxes oh. are subject to dischargeability, um, but they do have to meet certain, right. certain exceptions. And, and the next one for this one. Okay, here it is. You can kind of read them for yourself. Uh, debts that you've incurred after beginning Chapter 13 uh, repayment plan. The other two you can kind of read for yourself. Are all these true here for the most part? Yes. So the, the bankruptcy is only going to cover everything you incurred prior to that filing date. Mm -hmm. Anything that happens after that, you're, you're kind of on your own. Um, but, um, yes, court judgments. Um, Personal for, for injury. For, like, criminal cases. Right. Personal injury, you can discharge as long as you were not, it wasn't from, like, a DUI, yeah. you weren't intoxicated, and you hit someone and injured them. Um, okay. Those are not dischargeable. All right. Well, uh, got to get through these, or I'm not going to sleep. All right. Okay, the final <laughs> set here. Dealing with the changed circumstances. There could be all kinds of changed circumstances. There could be a death in the family, heaven forbid. Who knows? Let's put the first one up. There's only three of these. Um, dealing with the changed circumstances, despite all of your best efforts to stick to your budget, things can happen just out of the blue, that uh, completely out of your control. For example, a loss of a job, illness, other things. Obviously, we'll go through this quickly. Um, Rose, mm -hmm. Rosalina. I'm listening. Um, True. Things that happen, yes. Um, all of these things are, are life changing things that, can things that are right, out right. of our control. Right, job loss, and illness. And it all just really changes your financial life, it, it, yeah. your financial health. Yeah. All right, put up the next one so you have to be prepared for all those possible changes. Resist the urge to stop making payments or attempt self help by cr uh, uh, crushing your, your uh, budget or taking out a loan. Oh, that's the thing I was going to ask you. Not a good idea to take out a loan during all this, right? During a bankruptcy, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't no. do that. Don't even attempt it. No, I mean, that's what we're getting away from. That's yeah. uh, You don't want to put yourself right back where you started. Yeah, but you never know. Some people might try it. Let's put up the uh, last one under this category. Temporary, uh, s temporary suspension uh, or modifying the plan payments. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. Extending the length of your plan. Um, if you don't uh, exceed or on the uh, on the time limit there, uh, I think the rest of these we can kind of see for ourselves. Do you agree with all of the information you see there on the screen for the most part? You know, um, that last one, refinancing your mortgage, um, typically the mortgage company isn't going to allow you to do that. Um, they're, after bankruptcy, they'll probably make you wait at least 12 months. And who would, who in the heck would want to incur more debt or new debt? <sighs> you know, um, what is that? you know, the thing is I've had clients who come in the day that their bankruptcy case closes, they get that final yeah. order and they go out and, and finance a car. They buy okay. a new car. Right. So some people do it. Hey, for the most part, we got everything in and stay in communication with your attorney. Stay in communication. And um, it's a tough thing to go through, I know. Rosie, we got through it all. <laughs> all right. I can sleep tonight. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Come good. back again. Those are good tips. Absolutely. Phone number, real quick. We've got like 10 seconds. 559-221-2677. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for coming in. I know you're in and out of court. And uh, thanks to Charles Chuck McGill, our sponsor today on the program. See you back tomorrow with Bradley Hart. Have a great day.
Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill, and I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high-profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559-255-3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. If you have a need to promote your business or event, please consider MeTV Fresno for your next...